Let's talk about NRTL, which stands for Non-Random Two Liquid Movement. Once again, this is based on Gibbs Free Energy, so this is a first-generation uh, activity coefficient model, and it has one more parameter than the previous ones. I mean, the Margulis, von Lahr, and Wilson models. So now we are in NRTL, which is one of the fanciest one based on Gibbs excess energy. And of course, you can see now that we have a product of three uh, variables. Previously, we only had products of two variables. So right now, two variables, two variables. For the own, we had two variables, two variables, and true for Markov's. Right now, we have a product of three variables. And that's better because it actually models better the, let's say, the model of uh, between species A, B, and C. Or in this case, let's let's call it I, J, and K. Okay, let, if you want to know a little bit more on the model, I'm not going to be that technical because all this is done by Aspen. We just need to understand why is it good and why it's not that good uh, for our model. But as stated before, it's because of the three concepts here. Now the activity coefficient is based on this equation. The natural logarithm of the activity coefficient of i will be given by the addition of all the interactions of these guys right here. This is for j and k. This is for i and j giving k. And as you can see it's very important to consider k, j and i. So don't bother doing that, just take in mind that this is the mathematical model in which J is actually based on these guys right here. J is not actually the direct parameter, rather it will be alpha, which is alpha i j, which at the same time is actually C D. And for tau you will have A and B and E and F. So let me clear that away. And let's say when we go to the binary parameters from the NRTL, we're going to do that later on. But anyways, I just want you to explain to you right now. These are obtained from the Aspen Plus version 8.8 .8 BLE, or Vapor Liquid Equilibrium database. As stated before, we only need A, B, C, D, F, which is A, B, C, D, E, F. So actually, we have all of them here present. So from here you see that D is 0, E 0, F 0. So this is not dependent. So this will be 0. And these guys will be 0. So NRTL, even though it might, sound, it might be seen very fancy, it depends only on these three parameters. So you only substitute this here and here. And G will go here for each species, so that's important guys, for each species. Once again, very important to denote that this is only valid from certain temperature uh, ranges, so if you're going to use higher ranges of temperature, it will be relevant to know if your activity model will uh, handle that, okay? And very important once again, I'm pretty sure you know it already, but the coefficients are unsymmetrical, meaning that A, I, j is not the same as a j i so that's i like to call this the interaction between maybe a guy and a girl so you know the guy will be interacting with the girl in a different manner in which a girl interacts with a guy even though they are the same it is the guy and this is the girl so even though let's say this is i and this is j you know that the interaction that goes from i to j is not the same that j to i so that hopefully that uh, lets you understand the interaction differences or why do we mean by unsymmetrical, okay? Last but not least, uh, I, I have been talking about regression values from experimental data before. Actually, I meant that the Dortmund database is the main base in which we get these values. So this database is actually based on this real-life database, Dortmund Data Bank. Those are all the experimental data some experiments took. Maybe they have regression. Good reg hopefully they are good 
in regression values. They did this model, let's say for NRTL, at certain temperature values. They regressed that data and obtained the A, B, C, D, E, F. Maybe in real life you have plenty of times 0, 0, this is 3, this is minus 2, 0 0.12, etc. So these values are the ones that Aspen Plus will take from and assume they are real and then model the NRTL for the given temperatures, compositions, etc. Okay, so now NRTL. We've seen these three guys before. And as you can see, NRTL is, compared to all other, it is almost perfect. Or I mean, not perfect, but it applies for all these cases. Binary system is good, multi system is good. As you can see, guys, we got I, J, and K. Previously, we only got I and J, so that's important, multi-component valid. Asiotropic system, of course, because we're modeling real uh, real solution. Liquid-liquid equilibrium, it's perfect. Dilute systems will do, and ionic and polymer will do as well. Okay, so next time we're going to use a workshop in which we model NRTL.